Hey guys, it's AJ with Design the Everything. Today we'll be taking an existing model and generating G code for a CNC router. Now, this model we built a couple videos back uh, in the sketches video tutorial. This is a clamp for my small CNC router that we'll be cutting out on my small CNC router. Now, G code is the file that you put into the CNC router that controls it and spits out your part. Uh, that is done through what is called a CAM package, a computer-aided machining package. Uh, so we're going to get, so that's a different environment inside Fusion 360. You get to it by clicking Model and then CAM. All right, so now we are in the CAM environment. You'll notice that the uh, ribbon up here has changed. So we're going to come over here and we are going to start a setup. So setup. All right, we are gonna be doing milling uh, as opposed to turning. All uh, CNC routers are milling. Um, and we are gonna set the work coordinate system, the WCS. This is the zero point for your router, or the zero point for your CNC machine. Uh, so, it's, so we have a couple different options here. Um, we'll worry about the orientate or the orientation later. Right now, let's set the origin. So we can choose to set the origin off of a stock, a, a stock box point, um, the model origin, a selected point, or a model box point. Um, so we haven't talked about the stock yet. That You actually set that up in the next tab. Um, but that is, the stock is the piece of material that you will be cutting the, the finished part out of. You can kind of see it here as a ghost box around our part. These points right here are the stock points. Now you notice that when I clicked on one, it moved the origin. So I'm gonna set my uh, stock point is there. Now let's tell it what size we're using to cut or what size we're working on, what size of material. Um, so between the last video and this one, I went ahead and measured it and it is 0.5 inch plywood. So we can change, well, we can change a lot of different sizes about our material. Um, if you are doing like a full million operation where you're working in three dimensions, you want all of the work, all of the stock gone, except your model, then you might want to do a fixed size box. But since we're, you can kind of think of it as working in an infinitely big sheet of plywood because it doesn't really care. Uh, um, how big our actual piece of plywood is. We just care about cutting out this one shape from it. We're gonna use a relative box size. Um, and I want a zero top offset. So that means now the starting point there is gonna be right on top of our, uh, our box. Um, also just go ahead and click no additional stock. So, now it's only thinking it has the bare minimum. Uh, in post-processing, we can change the program name or number. Uh, some CNC machines will only let you have a number. Um, mine does not care, so I'm gonna call this clamp. And this is actually my version two, because my version one was the uh, little one one I showed you in the other episode. So I'm gonna call this clamp.2.0. And then in the comment, I'm going to say 0.5 inch plywood, 1 over 8 inch um, end mill. Now that way, when I go back, I can just easily see what settings I used. Oh, I also want to put left center reference. Um, and that way, when I forget later, I can always go back and find, um, like I don't have to go back into the CAD model to figure out how I did things. I can just look at that comment. Uh, so that should be everything we need for the setup. I'm gonna hit okay. And so now the computer basically just knows like what orientation it, everything is and how we're holding. Oh, actually that orientation is wrong. Z should be up for my machine. So back to setup. 
try that again. Um, orientation. I want to select the Z axis and I'm going to click on a vertical line. Now Z is going straight up and down, which is what my machine needs. Um, I think it also, did it move? There we go. It moved the uh, origin on me too. All right, so now the origin and the orientation are both in the right place. Um, Cam, like doing this process through Fusion is not for the faint of heart. I would not recommend it for a beginner. Uh, there, are, especially if you're doing something two dimensional like this, there are much, much easier ways. Um, all right, so we have that setup done. So now we want to do our pocket operations. Uh, our pocket operations are just going to cut out these in inside shapes here. Uh, now you always want to make sure you cut out the inside shapes before you go around and cut off the outside. If you cut off the outside, then it'll be loose when it's trying to cut the inside and you'll probably break a bit. Uh, at the very least, you'll ruin your workpiece. So I'm going to do a 2D pocket and I'm going to click the bottom border of all three of these here. All right, so now it has, it knows I'm working on these three pockets. Um, it's all, it's gonna, it knows that it's gonna do all three of these at the same time. I'm gonna go to tool, I'm gonna select my tool. Um, and then I just use the sample ones most of the time. They generally work for what I need. You can do custom tools, um, but very rarely have I needed to do that. Uh, I'm going to, I have a eighth inch, um, it's an eighth inch four flu upcut spiral bit. Uh, it really doesn't need to know all of those details. So I'm just going to click on that, hit OK. Um, so once you have the tool, uh, you can say you're cooling. If you have any, my CNC router obviously does not. Um, and we have all of our speeds and feet. Now, calculating these speeds and feeds is an art form. Uh, it's an art and a science. Uh, there are machinists who have done it for years and years and years. They can do it um, basically, you know, on a whim and get it right. Um, you can buy calculators. I'm sure there's open source ones online somewhere to get all of these numbers right. Um, I know by trial and error um, that I can do uh, 40 inches per minute just fine on my uh, uh, CNC. So I'm just going to change that to 40, that to 40. For the ramp, I do something lower, like 25. And for the plunge feed rate, um, I have found that I need a uh, very slow. So I'll go to like 10 inches per minute. Uh, those are probably conservative, um, but the bit I have is fairly narrow all the way up. It's a an eighth inch bit with an inch, eighth inch shank and it's fairly long for what it is. So I like to keep it slower. Um, if we go over here to geometry, um, I don't think we need to change anything. It knows where it's cutting. We already selected those. The heights. Um, so these are how high the bit moves during at different times. Uh, if it's doing a long move, it'll go to the clearance height. If it's doing a short move, it'll go to the retract height. Um, and the feed height is the top point there. So all of those should be fine. Um, I don't care about the bottom height. I'm just go, I've just always go with the defaults. Now for passes, you have your tolerance up here on the right, on the top right here. Um, that is the fineness at which it generates the G-code. Um, if you care what it looks like, you can do finishing passes. Um, step over. Step over is an important one we care about. Um, so step over is the amount that the bit will move over each time. Um, so this defaults to a certain percentage of your bit width. Uh, again, I have a wimpy CNC machine and a fairly long and skinny bit, so I'm going to turn that down. 
So let's do 0.05. Um, that, again, is probably way on the conservative side, um, but let's be safe and sorry. Um, if you're going slower, you can increase your step over. If you're going faster, you should decrease your step over. Uh, stock to leave. Uh, so if you have this checked, it'll actually leave that hole bigger than you want. And that's if you're going to go back later with a finishing operation. Uh, I don't want to. I want this to be fairly quick. So I'm just going to click that. And then multiple depths. Um, multiple depths. That's if you want to do different layers going down instead of trying to take it all, all out in one chunk, um, then click the multiple layers. I, I do. It reduces the load on the tool, um, which is will only um, keep you from breaking the tool and lead to finer cuts, but it will take a lot longer. Uh, if you have a, a more robust CNC machine, then you, know, you might be able to not do this, but for mine, I have to. So I'm going to do um, 50,000 step downs. I don't care about a finishing step down. Um, and let's see, that's to do a wall taper we don't want. I don't want to leave any stock. Okay, so that's good. And then linking. Generally, I just go with the defaults here. Um, this is just how it goes from one point to another point. Um, when it should lift the tool up, when it shouldn't, how it should enter, uh, if it's doing a ramp down or what. Uh, I generally just leave those to the defaults. So we're going to hit OK. And you'll see that it's uh, generated a toolpath for us. The red here is a, uh, a helix down. So it's going to spiral down and then cut a circle and then spiral down and cut a circle and spiral down and cut a circle. Um, you can do that more efficiently, but this is safer for the bit and smoother on your workpiece. It just works more reliably. Uh, in a production environment, you're going to have to start caring about things like that, cutting down a um, machine time. But for, you know, it doesn't matter to me if this is a two minute cut or two and a half minute cut. So to cut out the outside, we are going to do a, uh, a 2D contour. So if you, did a, if you tried to do this as a pocket like we did before, it would try to remove all of the plywood around this, uh, which would be time consuming and make a lot of sawdust. So, but the process is the same. So I clicked on 2D contour. We're gonna click the outside here, and then we're gonna go check all the settings. So we're in the geometry tab, that all looks good. Uh, all of the feeds are the same. Uh, now notice we can add tabs here to keep it from moving around. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. It's going to throw in the tabs. It'll make it a little bit harder to get out, uh, but it'll keep it from uh, coming loose and damaging the workpiece. Um, in my experience, the default tabs are really good, uh, unless you're doing really small stuff. The heights are the same. Um, the passes, so let's see, where's our, so the finishing feed rate, we don't care about finishing, multiple depths. Um, we do want it to do multiple depths, so we'll scroll down here. Um, and I'm gonna do the same thing before, I'm gonna go to, oop, that's finishing, I want a roughing step down, 0.05. We're not gonna do any finishing passes. Um, I don't want to leave any stock, so we are good. So I'm going to hit OK. Um, and let's go ahead and simulate this. So I'm going to shrink that down. I'm going to click on Setup and find the Simulate button. So there's the Simulate button. Um, I You can press this button, and that will show you the stock. Um, generally, I don't care about the tool path. I don't like to see the tool paths because you'll see the tool moving when you're simulating it. <coughs> we'll change the material to, uh, I guess, wall paint, because it's easier to see. And we can look at info. That'll tell us um, a lot of information, spindle speed, position, all that stuff. And statistics. This is going to take 10 minutes to cut, um, which we could probably 
if we worked at optimizing this, we could make that time go down a lot. Uh, it's traveling about 360 inches. It's doing two operations and no tool changes. Uh, if you're on a hobbyist CNC router and you see a tool change, that's a pretty good sign that you uh, messed something up. All right, so we're going to come over here and hit play and see what it does. So it's cutting out that middle hole. I'm going to speed this up with the slider down here. And it's going to jump over here, do that. Still no problems. I know that my bit's long enough to fit in these slots and around the, the outside, so that's not going to be a problem. And now it's going to go around the outside. Um, it looks good. I don't see any problems with this. Uh, this piece should come out just fine. Um, it didn't even report any collisions with this a little bit, so my, my longer bits will be just fine. I'm going to hit close. Now we're going to go up here to post process. Um, it does not like this folder. I don't really know where that folder is. Um, so I'm just going to have it. Yes, systems default. All right. So a lot of this is already set up. Um, this, you're basically choosing the language for the post process. This is us actually turning it into G code, by the way, when we're post processing it. I have a gerbil controller, uh, which is an open source Arduino based controller. Um, the output folder, which changed the output folder. So I'm just gonna, for finding it easier, I'm just gonna put it on the desktop. The extension is okay, it's a .nc. The program name, clamp.2.0, is good. It has the comment built in. Um, the units are the same. All right, then we're gonna come over here, and these are some options. And this says use G28. G28 is G code to home the machine right before um, it starts cutting. Um, I just, so if you have a machine like a uh, professional CNC machine that has a set zero point somewhere that has homing switches, you're going to want to turn that on because that'll reset the zero right before it goes to your machine or right before it goes to the cut. If you're doing it my way, um, where I, I set the zero point on the left-hand side of the cut, that will only cause problems. So if you have something like an X-Carve or a, mine's a Millwright CNC machine um, or a Shape Oko, you're going to probably want to turn that off. Uh, everything else looks pretty good here. Yeah, everything else is good. So we're going to hit post. It's going to ask us where we want to save it. Again, we're just, same thing, clamps 2.0 uh, onto the desktop. I'm going to hit save. And it's going to open up a uh, another window here with the G-code in it. So I just pulled the clamp off the CNC. This is what it looks like. Uh, as you can tell, it looks basically exactly like the CAD model. Uh, one exception, there is a little bit of a cut right there. I just had the uh, the zero point set a little bit low. Um, and so when it did that first travel move from the zero point to the first cut, which was right here, I think it just kind of went through. Um, I sometimes intentionally set my zero point a little bit lower uh, so that it uh, gets all the way through the plywood. You don't, you aren't left with, you know, a paper thin layer on the end. Um, I just overdid it this time. Uh, but overall it looks pretty good. Uh, it took 10 minutes to cut on the CNC, which is exactly what the software said it would take. Uh, it took me about 10 minutes to get the workpiece clamped to spoil board. Um, ironically, because I had a little tiny clamps. If I had had this clamp, it would have been really easy, but I didn't. Um, so I'm going to cut out four or five more of these, and that'll make life much easier in the future. If you liked what you saw, please hit the like button. If you have any questions, make a comment down below. And if you want to see the rest of my videos as they come out, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.